We are back. It's 2024. We promised we'd be back when the boys were in Hawaii, and that's exactly uh, that's exactly what's happening here, Jared. Not only are we back, but we're back with a different channel. How about that? We're on the Tee Off with Jan Stevenson Golf Channel. Big time, big time. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I, I ju- when you said that, I just, I think we said last year we were going to wear like Hawaiian shirts for this. Did we? I don't I think, recall I that. We, oh, that's we right, that. we did. <laughs> so what we blew that. that? We'll, we'll uh, yeah, have to do it next next year, I guess. But yeah, we kind of we screwed that one up. Uh, uh, I don't even have one. Do you? Oh yeah, I got I got a nice collection. I like Hawaiian shirts. Hawaiian shirts. Okay, no, uh, I'm, uh, unfortunately, I do not have any i used to i did have one back in the old days i don't remember exactly when it was but yeah i remember i had one and who knows where that is right now but uh we'll have to promise to do it again next year so uh i don't know what to tell everybody but i'm sure nobody cares uh let's uh (laughs) talk though about this new channel because jan stevenson is going to be with us uh on this show this is going to be we have a whole bunch we have actually about several segments on this particular show it's our basically it's our 2024 preview show and we're going to split it up uh we're going to have a regular preview segment where we're going to preview the weekly event sony open of course this week uh we've got jared's uh key stats of course back for another season uh we're going to go we're going to have our weekly picks uh, where we have $100 to invest in any way we want, one player, 10 players. Uh, so we're going to go over the odds of every player, of course, every key player. We're going to take a look at their past performances, obviously stats and overall analysis. So that's going to be the gist of our our, our weekly show. Uh, and uh, Jared, of course, will be with us uh, every uh, week, and we're going to try to record it on Tuesday afternoons. That's what we're doing right now, a Tuesday afternooner. And that's going to be the general hope that we'll be able to record this every Tuesday afternoon. Sometimes we won't be able to, but that's the so it should be up and available on this channel by Tuesday afternoon every every week, mostly every week. And of course, Jan will be with us during the majors, uh, just like last year, including our preview show. And we had our fantasy draft, which, by the way, we're going to conclude our draft because we still have to draft the live tour players, Jared. Oh yeah, that's that's the most fun part. I think. I think there's a. More more questions with those guys in that tour, so I think you can kind of separate maybe in our in our fantasy league with those guys. But um, um, uh, something else I wanted to mention. I um just do a little self promotion here. I, I uh, created a Twitter account for myself to do like some golf content. I didn't want to you know overlap with my football stuff with my main account, but um, so at Smola Golf Bets at oh. Smola Golf Bets is where I'm gonna. I'll just be you know it's nothing major. I'll just be um you know tweeting out some of the key stats I'm looking at each week. And then I'll, I'll tweet out my final betting card for the week. So if you're on Twitter um, at Smola golf bets is where I'm going to be doing that. That's awesome. So you'll be up there and obviously you'll be telling everybody about your bets each week. Yeah. I'll, I'll post my, my, you know, final, final betting card. Cause like you said, it's still Tuesday here, pretty settled on what I'm going to end up betting, but it, it might change over the next, you know, 36 hours. So at Smola golf bets, B E T S. Correct. Awesome. Correct. All right. So we've got ourselves a uh, nice, uh, we've got the social media starting to grow here, which is important. And uh, if you enjoy what you see here, as far as uh, anything at all, please like the video, subscribe, because we're at the infancy stage, obviously, of the channel. So we have a long way to go. We were on Prime Sports Network. I'll continue to edit some of the segments and, and, and post them on Prime Sports Network on that YouTube channel just to continue to cross promote so we can grow the golf channel 100%. Um, and then Jan is going to have a new segment and she's going to start it on the show today. It's going to be an insider segment. So, and we're also going to be doing videos with Jan this year on, uh, she's going to be analyzing uh, player golf swings, uh, putting, things of that nature. So that'll be separate videos. But the one I'm really interested in is the insider stuff, because that's when she's going to talk about players that have uh, maybe changed their swing in the off season, changed equipment. Maybe they got personal stuff going on in their lives, uh, injuries that they're coming off of. So we're going to talk a little bit about that on this show, but then we're going to have a show that we're going to record. Uh, actually, I think the first one we're going to record on Monday, just Jan and I, uh, which is actually why Jan's late because Jan got confused with the timing, thought that that was Monday's recording, but it's actually today's for the show. So anyway, she'll be with us in a little while. 
Uh, but that's something. Matter of fact, she's going to talk about um, uh, Benny on Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, and Jordan Spieth today. Those are four golfers that she's going to bring up today. Um, and I'm looking forward to that because that's the one thing, yeah. Jared, as you know, just trying to follow the personal side and injuries and all that kind of stuff. Yes. That's important. Yes. There's a huge void because, you know, the golf content – industry is growing, but there's, there's still a huge void in terms of injury reporting. And I, I mean, it's hard because I know that, you know, the PGA tour does not require it. You know, these guys don't have to tell us what they're dealing with, but um, yeah, if Jan can give us some inside info there that other people, you know, that these the sports books might not even have as far as injuries, um, you know, that, that could definitely give us a, a, a pretty big edge. Absolutely. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, again, Jan will be with us in a little while. So I tell you what, while we are waiting to hook up with Jan, let's uh, kind of fast forward to our weekly segment, basically. And that is when we're going to be previewing uh, the week. Uh, and that is the Sony Open. So uh, and, you know, I was looking over at the trends and this is, of course, if you were with us before or not, that's going to be something that we're going to always talk about, mm -hmm. key trends like that. Um, same golf course, so that's nothing to worry about. They've been playing here forever. Uh, but a couple of trends I noticed, and, and not a lot, because you get players that basically have one here like on their ninth appearance, their 14th appearance, uh, their second, their third, their fifth. Uh, some, some winners have never had a top 10 before. Uh, some have, so you don't have any of that stuff. There's no consistency, but, but a couple of things do stick out. And that is the fact that, um, eight of the last 10 winners participated in the event last week, which was tournament of champions century, whatever we're going to call it, of course now. And so that's good, but keep in mind, see what Kim won last year and had not played for two months, did not play in the event, the century last year, but it's still eight out of 10. I would think that will probably even increase as the Sony mm -hmm. open field increases, because this is a really good Sony open field. Yeah. And I remember talking about this last year. And I think, you know, one point I made is that it's the best players in the century or the TOC, whatever we're calling it now. Um, so it, it makes sense that those guys are going to win more often than not the following week. That, that said, like I, I'm usually not a big, trends guy when it comes to actually making my bets that this is one that i believe yeah all all my bets this week played last week so i'm yeah i'm buying into this trend i just think it, it does matter that these guys were able to knock off some rust last week and i don't even really care if the guys played well last week sure it's just that the fact that they played yes. you know got, kind of got back into the you know competitive mode plus these golf courses are so different it, you know, it'd be tough to find two golf courses other than the fact that they're both in Hawaii that are more different. You know, last week is a, you know, wide open, long, undulating golf course. This week is, you know, shorter, tighter, flat. Um, so I, I don't really care how well you played last week, but I do like the fact that, you know, that these guys played last week. I think it's going to help. And yeah, I'm more the trend guy. You're more the stack guy. Yep. Exactly. So, which is a nice combo. Uh, international players have won four of the last eight, including three of the last four. Uh, let's see. And another one, which is a little interesting. Five of the last eight winners came off a win in their previous three events prior to playing here. So that usually means, of course, that they're playing well at the end of two that of the previous year. Maybe they got a win. Uh, and, and I have found that out that, that, that it, it does seem that players had at least ended their year, November really is, is the month that they played well in November. It does seem mm -hmm. to carry over a little bit to the Sony open. Uh, Russell Henley is the last player to win here, making his first appearance. That was in 2013. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're talking over 10 years. Justin Thomas was the last player to win the century. Uh, and then follow that up with a win here. And Cameron Smith was the last player to earn his maiden PG tour victory here. And that was in 2020. So those yes, are I'm just, of I'm just looking through, you know, the because going back to your trend where um, however many guys had won in their last three starts, and, and, you know, I think so. The list is I would I would think Henley won in November. Um, my guy Svensson won the RSM in November. Um, Kirk obviously won last week. I'm trying to think if there'd be anyone else in this field that um, won in their last three starts. It might it might just be those those three guys. Yeah, probably. Uh... Keegan Keegan Bradley won in October. Okay. I'm learning all this stuff now because, as you know, I don't follow golf in the yeah, fall. <laughs> I know. I don't even know who won these events in the fall. 
Yeah. You're you, you you being the the fantasy football mogul that you are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, golf uh, takes the back seat uh, yep. if, during football season. So I did my best. I follow it all the way through. We'll talk more about that on our preview. Uh, as we, I mean, there are definitely some big events, and most of them are overseas, though. That's the thing because the DPT World Tour has their sort of FedEx Cup playoffs kind of deal uh, during football season. So. Um, yeah, and there's a few players that we definitely want to bring up on the show. We'll, 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 we'll make sure to do that. Um, I tell you what, now that Jan is finally arrived, and Jan, I'm going to make sure that I hook you up first before uh, we get you to say anything. So uh, she's going to be uh, here in just a few seconds. But uh, is there – go ahead and, and talk about the stats uh, as far as the yeah. ones that you think are going to be the most important for this week's event. Yeah, so what, one interesting thing about this week is um, Wiley, you know, th this course is, and this is according to Data Golf, which is a site I, I use quite a bit in my research. Um, Wiley is second to only Augusta in terms of the predictiveness of, of course history, meaning, okay. you know, guys who have played well here in the past tend to continue to play well. So, um, you know, cor course history, event history, whatever you want to call it, is actually a bigger part of what I looked at this week than usual. Okay. Um, so, so we do have the top 10 here in course history. It's, and I looked at just over the last five years, it's actually Hayden Buckley is first uh, in this field in terms of course history here. It's, you know, strokes game yeah. per round at YLI. And then you got, you know, Corey Connors, who's played well here. Matt Kuchar always tends to play well here. Um, Chris Kirk comes in 10th on that list. Interesting. He, you know, he is, tended not to play as well on courses like last week where he won, obviously, but he does tend to play well on these shorter positional courses. So by the um, way, Buckley, uh, that, 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 that's something that again, will fit in perfectly with Jan's new insider segment because Buckley, uh, had torn, uh, muscles in his ribs. Uh, and so he missed, uh, some time and, uh, not sure what his activity has been lately, but since he's playing and he has good course history, you're going to get good odds on him. Uh, so I don't know again, though, whether or not uh, his odds are good enough, you know, because it's still asking a lot for someone that doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, success on the PJ tour so far. Yep, for sure. Uh, um, yeah. So, so we have the course history top 10 there. Then I also just looked at par 70s under 7,200 yards. So short par 70 courses, which is what this is. So just kind of to, you know, expand our you know sample size for these guys you just you know, who, who plays on courses like this um let's see we have so we have ben on appears on both these top tens you know he, he's been good at this course he's been good on these short courses in general Corey connors appears on both these lists which is a big reason he's my uh, top pick for the week um then we have you know henley who has played well here eric cole's on this list so you know there, there's quite a few um, guys near the top of the betting board this week that, that do tend to play well on these these shorter positional courses like we're going to get this weekend. All right. Let's introduce Jan Stevenson to her own channel. How's it going, Jan? <laughs> Good. I'm sorry. I thought when we said 11, I thought it was... I confused Jan with that phone call earlier today. <laughs> I was going, all right, I was going over today's stuff with Jan, and then, all, then I ended the conversation with, all right, regarding our report next week, let's schedule it on Monday. And I guess that was the last thing Jan remembered was the Monday show. So, yeah, uh, yeah she's back. She's ready to go. Uh, she has all of her information because we have a lot to cover here. Mm -hmm. But Jan, good to, good to see you again. And uh, I know you made it nice. to Australia, your, your home country, for, for about mm -hmm. a month. How was that trip? It was wonderful. I got to uh, host the Australian Open, which was fun. I got to give the trophy out. Awesome. Um, unfortunately, it started pouring rain right at the end, but it was great to watch this. <laughs> the, it, what I like about it in Australia is that they play the women's US Australian Open, yes. the men's Australian Open, and yes. the all abilities all on the same course and, uh, at the same time. So you get to watch a a group of PGA and then a group of LPGA and a group of double ability. So you get to see everybody's game and, um, and, and, uh, Neumann won it from, from, uh, from the live tour and he played great. I yeah. mean, he, he did it so far. It was great to watch that. So I got to give the trophies out. So it was nice. Did, Oh, you mean Joaquin Neiman? Joaquin Neiman. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, because yeah, he stole that. Because he, he was not even like uh, – he was just hanging around and he was able – and I forget who it was who 
Because I know Minwoo looked like he was going to win back to back. Yeah, and then he played awful, and ben, and the Japanese guy. Yes, um, he Hoshino. He, in there. he lost Hiroshima. He lost in the playoff that, uh, and he made yes. some amazing putts just to hang in there in the playoff. And mm-hmm. that's somebody to keep an eye on. Now he's a Japanese player, so he's not going to be on, you know, full time PGA guy. But keep an eye on him because we really haven't had. Uh, you know, many Japanese players that have been successful on the Japanese tour come over to America and, and play well. So he's somebody to keep an eye on. He's, he's a young kid. Yeah, he is. And he's got an amazing short game. I don't know that he hits it long enough for the PGA Tour yet, but he definitely, his short game was so impressive. How about how about this um, Rio? He he said, he he said Sune? Is that is, is another Japanese golfer. I've heard, I've heard good things about him. I think he's been playing well on other tours. Did you get a chance yeah. to see him, Jen? We break open more now. They used to always stay on the Japanese tour because, you know, that's it's kind of easy to travel around in Japan. And But now they they want it to be recognized. You've got to do it on the PGA Tour. So they're, they're traveling more. They're, there's some really good players coming up on, in Asia. It's a lot of the guys, too. The Korean and Chinese are really good, looking good. All right, so we're through our stats. Well, actually, you you uh, the top ten on the on the uh, par seventies under seventy two hundred uh, yeah. as far as those stats uh, being the top guy in the list, Aberg, and I I I just you know when we looked at the odds to begin this week in our first <laughs> event of the year, mm-hmm. uh, and seeing him as the favorite by like. I mean, they put him as the favorite at what twelve to one, and the next player, which was Matthew Fitzpatrick and Terrell Atten, were what sixteen to one. It's wow. like, whoa, hold on a minute. I mean, come on. And it was no way I, I thought that was going to hold, and it hasn't because now they're both tied, Aberg and Fitzpatrick at sixteen to one, I believe. But I know Jan, and of course, we'll talk about our fantasy teams a little bit later on. Uh, picked Aberg on our team, and we know he's going to have a very great, a very strong career. But I think that's maybe asking a little bit too much. Even though, like I said, I referenced him as being at the top of your stats uh, for, for yep. a couple of key stats to win this week. Well, I picked yep. the you stole him from me. Remember? Who's that? I think you took Aberg. No, no, you did. I took uh, Nikolai Hosgard. I stole him from uh, you. Oh, that's right. You, you're right. You picked yes. Nick. Yeah, Nick. Yes. Then they're both. You got nice. Aberg. Oh, good. Yes. It, it, it's it's impressive to me that he is first on this list on the these you know short par seventies because I do think his driver is his best weapon. Um, so the fact that he's still able to play well even on these shorter courses where the driver probably is taken out of his hands at least a little bit is impressive. So I, I just th- I just think these sports books don't want to get burned by this guy. Like they know people want to bet him. So you know they're they're not going to give you good odds on him. You're not going to you know find value on 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 him at this point. I agree. I, I think if there's like I looked at your stats and and um, you know I've played the course quite a bit and uh, there's a lot of dog legs when you but you, but because those guys hit it so far they have to dog leg across out of bounds. So if they push or pull it just a little, you know they're gonna you know they're teeing it up. At, you know they're teeing it up on and being number being three so for a long hitter it, it is a harder course but then he hits his three wood as far as everybody else's driver so. but right. you know i think there's there's better picks i would take him for the longer golf courses and you look at his how he played last week um he played well but um there are other players i would look at definitely ones you named i mean Corey connors and and eric cole i mean the golf course is made for them, you know. Right. Uh, I don't know. Eric hits a right to left, so I don't know. Both of those guys actually hit it right to left, so I'm not sure on the course. I'm trying to think of the dog legs left where they could get in trouble, but they're both of them. They've got great short games. Yeah, I get, we got to get uh, at some point. We're going to get Jan maybe next year, but we got to get her somewhere with uh, w- with you, Jared, for like a good hour and go over the players who fit better swinging right to left, left to right. Well, you know, type right. of golf. I mean, that, that I don't think anybody has that kind of information out there, do they? Well, they all know which way they work it, but I don't know that they yeah. know that with the combination of golf courses and the stats. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like easily because golf stats to begin with, or, or trends, whatever you want to call them, are not as easy to find anyway. Um, there's there's a few out there, and, and there and you know, Jared has his likings, and so do I. Um, but, uh, it's, it is hard to find cause then you also have to make sure they're reputable and you can trust them and so forth and so on. But yeah, yeah. as much information as you can get, I mean, that's what everybody's looking for in golf. 
Well, and plus the way they set the courses up, and usually, you know, some of the courses they set up hard and fast, and some they don't. But right. tends, yeah, tends because to... you don't know that. I mean, you don't know. Sometimes, like a player will go out there and he'll, he'll play totally bad on the golf course, and you'll you say you would say to yourself, "Well, I knew he wasn't going to play well because he shoots right mm -hmm. to left, and that's not." Yeah. The and it's like, well, I didn't so, know that. I wish I knew that. I wouldn't have put a hundred bucks on the guy. So that's a well, you know, know you you know what stat that you started that I think was interesting, and and I probably was the one that first mentioned it is that. The tea times, you know, the early lates when you look at weather, and now they're all doing it. But yeah. we did it last year, and then they started doing it after we started. That is important to note, especially when you go overseas uh, to the Open Championship and those kind of events. But, yeah, that's uh, we always talk about that, Jared, as far as – I mean, we don't really care about the week to week stuff, but the majors and the big events. So it's when you really meticulously look at things like that, because that will matter, yeah. especially obviously the weather uh, is, is the factor. That's that's why we're looking at it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And it's a pet peeve with the players, you know, and that people <laughs> never talk about. They'll go, you know, we'll we'll say, oh, I had the wrong side of the draw. And we understand perfectly that, that can make a huge difference. And yet mm -hmm. they don't talk about it that much. So let's go back to the, the shot shape thing and, and can, we'll give fantasy national another plug here. We need to get them to sponsor this show. Cause I'm always shouting them out. Um, fantasy national does have data on shot shapes off the tee. Um, so that's what it's so called shot shapes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. That's what I'm calling. Yeah. That's actually what they call it too. Shot shape. So like Eric Cole, 60% of his, T balls move right to left, like Janice I would. Have, I bet it's more than that. Yeah. If I, if you know, because everything he hits slightly right to left, but that's the only way he can actually get a little bit of power because he is so yeah. small. And well, they um, have, yeah, they. I mean, they have sixty percent right to left. They have nineteen percent straight. So you know, I don't know how they define this exactly. You know, even those might be slightly moving, but um. So yeah, we we, we have that data. If then we could then you know combine it with Jan's course knowledge as far as what which shot shapes work better on certain courses. Yeah, it'd be good to follow, like that yep. first year and and see. Okay, well, did it did it work? Did it really matter? And uh, and maybe we find out that it matters a certain percentage where you go, wow, that's that's significant. We have to put that into our our weekly handicapping tool or or yep. make it one of the important ones. Okay, so as far as picks, and then just uh, look, it's a deep field. So as I mentioned, Fitzpatrick and Aberg are now. Uh, the co-favorites at 16 to one Hatton at 18 to one. Uh, and then you have Harmon, Henley Connors and so forth. Um, so it's not like there's a lot of big names here, but it's a very deep field where you could go down. Like I could go all the way down to like, say, um, you know, even Emiliano Grillo who won last year is 80 to one, uh, wow. you know, Horschel's 90 to one, you know, so these are players that, um, if it was a considered a, a, a pretty weak field, it would be more like cut in half, 30 to one, 40 to one. So it just shows you there's just, and the quality of players, of course, this is going to make it that much tougher uh, every year as it goes on, Jared. And we'll talk about one and dones a little uh, in a little bit too, because uh, that's the game and the contest that uh, you've been playing for a few years. Jan and I uh, started last year and we're going to continue to play it. And that just, I think becomes harder and harder to win and to figure out which one player is going to win an event each week. For sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk through the strategy again here. It's, it's good. We're, it's good. We have these young golfers coming up like a bird. Cause you know, we're, we lost John Rahm to the yep. tour. We'll see who follows him there. But um, you know, that, that that's watered down. It's, it's going to make the majors even more exciting though. Cause it's you know, going to be four times a year that we finally, you know, get to see all these guys playing in the same tournament again. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, uh, again, we'll, we'll draft the live tour guys in just a little bit. So as far as this field, you know, what's interesting is I have, did you know who your picks were last year in this event, Jared? Yes. It's, it's nice. I, you know, I keep all my um, notes for these shows saved so I can go back and look last year, you know, what I said about the course, who I picked. Um, I picked Connors in this tournament last year as well. So. Yep. Going, same same, same money, same odds. Wow. 25 to one. So Jared's going to yep. invest 40 bucks on Connors at 25 to one. And again, Connors, uh, he's played here five times. He has four top 15s, one top five, but he, always, he does not have a top five since this Texas open win. Hmm. Um, so I'm a little, I would be a little bit concerned with that. Uh, but again, this is a good golf course for him. Yeah. I mean, it's concerning. The only, the only tournament he's ever won on the PGA tour is, is Valero. Um, so, uh, but so Connors, 
he didn't finish well last week. I think he was, well, he was 33rd last week at the century, but he was eighth in that field tee to green. He lost seven strokes putting, um, which is always a potential concern with Connor. You know, he's not a good putter, but for whatever reason, he's gained strokes putting in four of his last five appearances here. So he seems to, I don't know, maybe it's luck, but maybe he just, you know, feels good on these greens, feels comfortable on these greens. So I, I you know, I trust the ball striking to be there. And then if we can get him, you know, gaining strokes on the green, um, I think he has a really good chance to win this, this event. We talked about, I like, I like, I like Connors and he, you know, you, he finished second in the, the mixed team championship, the Grant Thornton that they had in Naples at the end of the year. So he has been playing and uh, he played really well and he actually putted quite well in that tournament. We talked about uh, international players uh, who have had success here. Three out of the last four, four to the last eight. And out of our nine picks, seven of them are international players. Uh, Corey Connors leads your list. Ryan Fitzpatrick leads my list as one of the co-favorites. Uh, I, I just think right now he's dialed back in again. I know last year wasn't a great year for him. We were a little bit surprised that he just wasn't very consistent, but he gained uh, his game again late in the year, eight straight top 30, six of those top 15s, four of those top fives, a runner up and a win. He's the highest ranked player in the field. He's eighth. Uh, Harmon, by the way, ninth. Those are the only top 10 players in the field. Played last week, played pretty well last week as well. So, yeah, I, I think uh, the way he's playing, I, I believe he's definitely the class of the field. That doesn't mean he's going to guarantee win. But um, I definitely think he should be the favorite of this event. And, um, and I'm not even sure Terrell Hatton should be second or third, to tell you the truth. Uh, he only has two top 10s in his last eight events. It did have a runner-up at the BMW PJ Championship. But, uh, yeah, it's not like Terrell Hatton's on his game, and yet he's got the same odds as, as Fitzpatrick. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Neither well, of those guys, neither Hatton nor Fitzpatrick, has ever played Sony. Yep. Um, and I think Fitzpatrick especially. He, you know, Again, he's seventh on my list of um, best players on the short par 70. So, like, he's done well at these types of courses, so it should be a good good fit for his game. Well, and plus, you know, they've they've been uh, they still base out of England, even though um, Fitzpatrick and Hatton still play a lot in. Well, actually, Fitzpatrick bases out of Hilton Head, and uh, Hatton has been playing in in Florida. The fact that they can get to Hawaii and warm up on their game, and with the change of the rules at the Century, where now it's the top fifty and it's one of the designated tournaments, so the field was a lot stronger, a lot more players. And a lot of them decided to like make this a let's let's make this a two week venture and and because they know the weather's going to be great they can work on their game you know i love terrell hatton swing i just love it and it's and it's a little left to right which is good because across in some of those if you're right to left and a couple of those dog legs you got to be careful you don't hit it too far left too quickly um and fitzpatrick i heard well you know he got engaged last year and and that was he was pretty busy ah, with there that. you go see that distracted him <laughs> that'll distract anybody <laughs> yeah he was dating he was going back and forwards to hilton head she's from hilton head she's a chiropractor see? so he was pretty busy with that and um now that they're engaged and i'm it's out of the way wedding stuff so anyway yeah. that, that i think he settled down and she's with him in hawaii and cool. they, they say he's rolling it really well well there you go so uh, that's what you can count on this year on, on, on this channel. Uh, Jan's inside information on these players. By the yeah. way, we're going to record, as I was just mentioning before, so we're going to record your first full insider segment, which will be on Monday. And so we'll have it on the channel on Monday. Uh, so keep an eye on that because that's going to be, we're going to have all of the players that you need to keep an eye on for all sorts of reasons for 2024. Um, yeah, we'll try to get some inside scoop. I'm, I'm actually got a call in from, one of the caddies on the live tour to get some insider on ah, those guys. Too. That's right. Live tour too. We'll have a little bit. Uh, Cause that's a uh, matter of fact, I think there, you know, I was looking over it to go over our draft and there seems to be a pretty good field now of about 30 players. So yep. that's, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. So getting better. Getting yeah. better. Again, the team thing distracts you when you're watching it and the whole visual and the way they produce the, the event is still, it's, it's, it's kind of distracting, but um, yeah, it's just a better field. Okay, so uh, your number two pick, and by the way, I put uh, 45 on Fitzpatrick at 16 to 1. You put uh, also 40 on Henley. Is that, is, that, is that correct? No, Rose, excuse me. You had Henley last year. Uh, I was thinking about Henley because you drafted him. Uh, Justin Rose, who I drafted. 
So you have Justin Rose at 35 to one and Hideki Matsuyama at 45 to one as your next two, as your next two picks, Jared, uh, you put 25 on each. Yeah. So Rose, um, he had a, he had a weird week last week. I don't know if you guys saw, he got the two stroke penalty on Thursday for hitting the wrong golf ball. He hit, <laughs> he hit Taylor Morris golf ball. Okay. I don't know how he shot, do that. Yeah. He shot, he, so he, he shot a 71 on, um, Thursday, which, you know, kind of took him out of it, but he shot a 61 on Sunday. Um, so he's kind of rolling into this week off a hot like round. It. He led, he led the entire field in approach on Sunday was second in T to green. So hopefully he can kind of carry that momentum into this week. Rose hasn't played here since 2017, but he did come in second that year. And then he came in 12th and 13th in his two appearances here before yeah. that, that. So um, he, he's had success here. It's just, it's just been a while. Um, yep. And, you know, Rose is, he's, he's number one for me in the stat model I ran this week, just based on the stuff I'm looking at. I looked at, you know, driving accuracy, Rose is fifth and good drives gained. He's second in this field and approach. He's first in uh, greens and regulation gain. So yeah, more of the accuracy, accuracy stuff I looked at Rose um, last year was very good at. So I, I think, I think this course should, should fit him. And Matsuyama, uh, three top 20s in 10 appearances at this yeah. event. And he won here just a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, di- I didn't go into this week um, expecting to bet Hideki, but I just think 45 to 1 is just way too big of a number for him in this field. I still think he's one of you know the best five or six players in this field. And like you said, Greg, he won here just a couple years ago. So I'm, I'm still confused. He, now, he Hideki did, was not good last week, which is probably why he's at – these odds. Um, but again, I'm not too worried about that. I, I, I like the fact that he played last week, hopefully knock some of the rust off. And again, you know, he's, he's won here before and he didn't, he didn't play that well at the century before winning here. So like he, he's, he's done this before where he didn't play well, then he, he gets the Y line and wins. So Jan, do we still have to keep an eye on him as far as his back and his neck or is that past history? Well, it just depends on the weather. If it gets windy, he's not a great wind player. If it's if it stays calm, I, I like his odds because it's, you know again you've got a good feel for the golf course when you've won there. And he he took some time off and, and uh, came to Vegas late just to warm up for a week and then went back to Hawaii. So he's he took quite a bit of time off in Japan. It's too cold to play there. So. He's that last week was a good warm up week for him. And, and I agree. I mean, it's a good golf course for him. He hits the ball very high. So if it gets windy, it's a little more difficult to control when he won there. It wasn't that windy. So, and, but the scores were really low. So he was making everything and um, he's good on slow greens. The greens in Japan tend to be very slow compared to American. And even though he's one of the masters, but the greens were a little bit slower that year. So he's somebody that likes them, you know, because he, he likes to, he's, I would think it's his weakest part of his game, but he's in, in, um he gets too tentative. Whereas the really good part is just kind of jam him in that there is a lot of grain on those greens. They're playing that new pus pollen on the greens, but it's still grainy and it's kind of sticky. So um, they, they were complaining last week because that grass is really hard to chip off. You know, you get against the grain and they were chunking them a lot and it catches the edge of the club. So I, I think his chipping is probably the next week as part of his game. So if he's hitting it good, it doesn't matter. Speaking of last week, I just I get this off my chest. I, look, I, I don't know. The players are obviously getting better every year. And I know that this event was designed for like, uh, let's just have fun and have some 10, 15 top players come. And But now they're trying to make it more serious. If they're going to try to make it more serious with the field, please toughen this golf course up then. I don't know how you do mm-hmm. it, but nobody wants to see 28 under par, 26 under par. It's just, it's, you know, it's a little bit – nobody needs to see that. So if you're going to make it a serious golf course, make it a signature event, toughen up, toughen up the golf course. Can they toughen up a golf course like that, Jan? Well, it, to me, it's a hard golf course because it's so hill elevated, and I can't get to cross. I can't get over those hills. Whereas nowadays, they're just bombing them over the hills, and they all go in the same spot, which I don't like as far as golf course design. But it's because the course is so hilly. It's it, and the, the wind didn't blow. You know, when yeah. the wind blows, the scores get different. They, it blew on Saturday, and the scores got a little bit up. So it, it you, you know, you're at the mercy of the weather. It, it's always going to be warm, but if it's windy and, and and rainy then it's a little different they can't make it any longer because the golf course then wouldn't be fair to the shorter hitters not that there's many short hitters playing in but the rough (laughs) but the rough yeah they need to make the rough 
definitely need to grow up the rough and I would firm up the greens. You know, they tend to get the greens too wet and then they spin it back and then they can save themselves because there's a couple of blind shots there where they can hit it, you know, as long as you don't hit it short where it comes back to you. So they hit it long and suck it back to the pin. So if you made the greens where they were firm, and I think that's the whole key. They keep saying, oh, you've got to make the golf courses longer for the players. Let's make a ball go shorter for them. All you got to do is, like you said, Greg, is is row up the rough and firm up the greens and you miss and, and you're in trouble and you just don't have that out there. All right. Uh, last week's second place finisher is my second pick this week, uh, Thigala at 30 to 1. I'm also going with Benny on at 30 to 1 as my third pick. Of course, uh, Jared talked about on and the stats that really work mm-hmm. well. Thigala's got five top 20s in his last seven. He's got the win at Fortinet, the runner up last week, played here a couple years ago, uh, eight under par, 48. So that's good enough for me. And on not only the stats, uh, 12th last year here. Fourth last week, three top fives in his last six, including a runner-up at Wyndham. And Jan is going to talk about uh, why he is somebody to keep an eye on uh, in the Insider Report for 2024. Uh, so uh, I just invested uh, 25 in Thigala and 20 on On. And then my last two picks were Kucher and Norin. Kucher 50 to 1, Norin 55 to 1. I put five bucks on each. And Jared, his uh, long shot was Nick Taylor, the Canadian at 70 to 1. You put 10 bucks on Taylor, Jared. Yeah, my, the second Canadian on my card. And I yes. didn't even bet my favorite Canadian, who is Adam Spenson, who is in this field. Um, and it's on your fantasy win. team. That'd be- That'd be, yeah, that'd be painful if he, he wins and I'm not on him. But um, yeah, I just I, I like the number on Nick Taylor. Obviously, the, the big win at the Canadian Open last year. Um, 11th and 7th his last two times here. Now, both of those have been on hot putters, which okay. is a little worrisome. Um, you know, the ball striking has just been OK for Taylor at this event. Um, but I, I just like the. Um, the number, I think he's, you know, he's better than this number. And again, he, he's a guy who he played last week. He wasn't great, but I just, I like the fact that he played and, yeah. you know, was able to, it was able to knock some rest off. It's not his first event in, you know, two or three months. And you mentioned Kucher also plays well here. Uh, eight top tens yes. and 18, five top fives, a win in 2019. Matter of fact, lately he's got eight top 15s in his last 10 with seven top tens, four top fives and a win. Uh, and 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 he's playing better lately because he didn't have a great year last year, but he is playing better. Three top 20s in his last five, runner-up at that Worldwide Technology Championship event, which he was leading big until he got a, I don't know, what did he have, like a quadruple bogey? I've never seen some ugly to watch. Oh, my oh. God. I kept, he kept chunking it, hitting it, coming back at him. Yes. And, tried it. and he kept get, hitting that hybrid. It's like it's not working. Change to a – and he's such a great wedge player. I was shocked he did that. He had like, what, a six-stroke lead or something like that, and he went off the green. He was like tied. It was amazing. So anyway, um, that was a runner-up for him. And uh, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned to uh, the other long shot, being uh, Norin, who has two top fives in his last four events. Okay. Um, anybody else before we move on, uh, uh, Jared, that you wanted to mention? Um. You, you mentioned Grio. I think he um, is someone I'm still considering just at the number 80 or 90 to one. In this yeah, that's field. a big number. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the, the other the other guy I'm um, still looking at who actually bet last week is Tom Hoagie, um, who's just a really good wedge player. I think he's, you know, he, he won at um, Pebble, which is another, you know, short course. Um, and Hoagie was third in last week's field in strokes gain approach. So the, the iron play was there. He just, he didn't make enough putts. So uh, I think Hoagie's still like a hundred to one. Uh, so wow. he's something to, to maybe look at. Definitely a good one. What's, what's Eric call? What's his odds? Uh, he's Pretty low. 28 30, now, 35, 28. Yeah. yeah he's wow. gone down to 28 to one. That's kind of why I stayed away from him. I like him. We all like him. How can you not the way yep. he's playing? He's got five top 15s in his last six, four top fives and a runner up at the Zozo. He hasn't won yet. So that's coming, but yeah, uh, that those odds I think were just a little too low for me. Now that he's twenty-eight to one, Kirk's trying to make it back to back. He's playing here. Uh, he actually has been runner-up here twice. You mentioned him in the stats. McCarthy is somebody to keep an eye on, maybe as well. 
Uh, he, his odds aren't that bad. Your boy Cam Davis is playing this week. Zalatoris started off at 30 to 1, which was the biggest joke in the world. I mean, now he's 50 to 1. He should be 200 yeah. to 1. The guy is not winning this week. It's going to take us some time. Uh, and, and he even played in a hero when he was the last place. I mean, come right. on. Just give the guy a little time. And I know you were a little bit concerned with Zalatoris, too, because of uh, the injury. It's not something that's, you know, who knows how he's going to respond to it. Yeah, you know, it's it's one that I'm concerned with. I know I know Jared loves Zalatoris, and I like him as a person. Um, I think he's great. You know, his putting's always been horrible. But the thing that concerns me is that with his golf swing, it's kind of like Ashte um, Matias is that um, he's he's somebody they have they call it the X factor where your hips um, start down before you finish your backswing, and there's a huge um, lash then with that, and because of his back. That's going to be a major problem. That's what they keep saying about Batia. If he ever put on weight and didn't have that X factor, um, he would not be able to hit it as far. So I'm concerned with him how much he's – that's his second surgery. This was a major surgery. Um, You know, this was kind of dangerous. And so I think he's going to be very tentative. If he goes goes out there hard, I'll be shocked. Yeah. Did did, did he he change his swing? I thought I saw something about him changing his swing post he had to change it otherwise he wouldn't yeah. be able to walk um but right. it, you know and it's still he's still got a good golf swing and it might actually be better for him now because he's kind of going to do like um a couple of the players have done is shorten their follow-through so it's a little more compact and um it doesn't have you know that x factor what they call it there's this certain term for it that it's, it's it's x something or rather where it's the you know the difference between the hip and the and your shoulder yeah. on the way down and I, I heard his swing is a lot more compact, but still, I don't know what happens once the gun goes off, what, how you, you know, if you can keep that going. Yeah. And it's, he's only changed for the last year, so I don't know. All right. Now, before we move out, one and done, and again, we're going to be talking about this. So I have three players that I'm, I'm thinking about with one and done, and you have to, you know, it's the first event of the season, so there's a whole bunch of strategy involved there. But one of the guys that I am looking at, and we just mentioned, actually, all, obviously all three of them, but we just mentioned him, and that's Eric Cole. I mean, now I would mention him in this one because he's hot. I don't know how – I mean, I don't know if he's going to continue to be hot this year. You know, he's still yeah. – I know he's 35. It's not like he's 25. But still, he's, he's, he's new to, to, to success on the PGA Tour. So I'm thinking this week may not be a bad week to take him. I'm also looking mm-hmm. at the gala, and I'm looking at Benny On. Same thing. Now, Jan is going to talk about why she thinks he could be hot all year, but we don't know that, and he, this might be a perfect time to take someone like Benny on. Um, anyway, those are the three players that I'm thinking about. Who are you thinking about taking this week, Jared? One and done. Yeah, I have three players I'm thinking about too, but they're three different guys than you. Um, so Corey Connors and Justin Rose I'm considering. Um, I, I, just, you know, I just like both of them this week. Um, the the other guy is Russell Henley, who I just think this is like, just thinking for the rest of the season, like what other spot would be better to use Russell Henley? I'm not sure there is one. Uh, my my concern with Henley would be like, is he going to be the most popular pick, which is always tough to know beforehand, but I do think a lot of people will be on Henley. So I'm pro I'm right now I'm leaning towards Connors. I just, I I just really like Connors this week. Um, so that that's my lean as of now, but I I might end up going to uh, Henley or Rose. Have you done any, uh, work on this yet, Jan? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I actually am interesting about Justin Rose because he was not on my radar. Uh, obviously, I've got Eric is up there, and uh, I'm not going to do Ben Arn on this one. I had him at first because, you know, I'm, I'm so on. I love his new coach and what they've done with the swing and then, you know, and the new putting style. But it, he hits it. They're, they're, they're carrying on how because he's gained like 20 yards that he's going to be great. But, you know, Distance isn't the big thing on this golf course. I like uh, Corey Connors. I'm going to probably go with JT Poston. I mean, JT mm, Poston is such a good putter. And he played well last week. I don't know that he finished well, but I think he shot like five or 600, which is kind of like par over there <laughs> yeah. um, at Kapalua. But it's, I think it's a good golf course for him, and, he's, and his short game is so good. So he's somebody I'm looking at. So I'm probably going to keep Ben on for a longer golf course. All right. Now, let us start off uh, with our – actually, let's kind of wrap up quickly what you thought, Jan, because, again, you, you, you were very active uh, with what happened during the fall. For me, it was easy. 
The biggest story for me was what we, the player we just talked about now was Nikolai Hosgard and how well he started to play even, even going into the DP2 World Championship and then to be able to win such a big event with Victor Hovland right there and John Rahm right there uh, it was such a big deal. Now he missed that putt on 18, which all of a sudden you started thinking, oh, no, don't tell me he just choked after having such a great day. But he, he, nobody birdied the par five. I mean, nobody uh, put pressure on him. So he was very fortunate, and sometimes you need to be fortunate as well as we as we know in this game. But anyway, that was my big story of the of the fall, the off season in golf was the fact that Nikolai Hosgard maybe not going to happen this year, but he is somebody that I think has got a really good game and maybe has future top ten in him. Oh, definitely, Nikolai's got a great golf game. I'm both both of those guys, him and um, I bet. Uh, have got great golf games. I mean, they're so impressive that that he's going to be a great player. I just depend. He's. I think he's playing full time on the on the PGA Tour now, right? Yes. And again, who knows how much he'll play? But yeah, that's uh, that is the word. That was big to him too. Um, matter of fact, he just got in, so uh, he just qualified. So, and of course, his brother Rasmus uh, just failed to qualify. So that's another player we'll be keeping an eye on. And, and did you have a, a, a notable anything that just? just you know, was the big deal for you as far as since uh, since the end of the season last season, Jan? Oh, I think I think Cam Davis. Um, the reason is that I watched him at the Australian Open. Um, he's he's played a lot. He played all of the tour the tournaments in Australia. So he comes over here with um, you know it's not there's no rust to knock off. He played he didn't play that great. Um, him and Adam, Adam Scott played great at the Australian Open at the end. Yes. Um, I watched him on Sunday and I was like, wow, that was like Adam Scott of the old. You know, I mean, he shot really low. He qualified for the Open Championship there because they gave, they give the top three from the Australian Open get to automatically qualify. And that was one of the reasons that um, Joaquim went to Australia. So he told me it was because he wanted to make sure he qualified for the, for the Open Championship, mm -hmm. which he obviously did. And, um, the Japanese guy Hiroshima, Hashino, he made it too. Yeah. So, yep. So, those those I, I was really impressed with. I'm um, obviously the two Aussies, uh, Cam Davis and and Adam. All right, now let's get into our predictions for 2024. Uh, first of all, do you guys believe Scotty Scheffler should have won Player of the Year last year, Jared? I do. Um, you know, I think as a, I, I was happy to see him win it as a stats guy because. Based on the stats, I know he didn't win as much as he should have, and he didn't, you know, he didn't win a major. Um, but based on the stats, he was clearly the best player on the PGA Tour. You know, he, he led in basically every strokes gain category besides putting. Obviously, he led in scoring average. So, if, you know, if, if the award is for who was the best player over the season, I think I think Scheffler was that guy. Do you agree, Jan? Yeah, I do. I, you know, I, I actually studied his golf swing more this winter because I couldn't understand why he was doing his stat like like jared said about the stats so i i looked at his golf swing i broke it down and and um he has a lot more good things than i realized everybody always talks about you know his right leg but i don't like um if there's too much x factor uh, um you know difference when it's, it's supposed to be if it's 50 degrees or, or less it's better for your for your back um and some of those guys i talked about theirs were 63 degrees which is way too much um, talk on your lower back. And I think that's one of the reasons that, like I said, that, um, that it's going to be tough for Zalatoris because he's, he had, you know, a 63 degree and that's, that's too much. I mean, it does cre create a lot of club head speed, but it also is way too much talk on your back. So he's, when you go back to Scotty, Scotty didn't have that much and he's a big, strong guy. You know, you look, when you up close, you don't realize how big he is until you see him in real life. And you're like, wow. And he does a lot of good things. His backswing is really good. And then the way he doesn't spin his hips, he actually, that's, you know, how he has that funny move where he's, his leg goes back, his right leg goes yeah. back. That actually saves him because it stops him from spinning out too quickly. Because oh. if he spun out too quickly, the ball will go left to left to left because he comes in and he can, he's so strong, you know, he can come in and hold it off. And if he, Remember at the PGA, he kept slipping when it rained that the day before. Yes. And he kept hitting those lefts because he doesn't have his stop fade because his leg was slipping and he couldn't hold off the, the right hip. And so uh, I, I actually was more impressed with this swing when I broke it down. Of course, I don't like his putting stroke. I know they've done a lot of things to it. Um, you know, he's got, 
shorter putter, his arms are hanging better, and it's a little better. But I still notice that that he still has a little bit of a cut across and hold off, and it makes the club face shut down at impact. So he's, I still think he's got some work to do on the putting. But, yes, he should have been player of the year. Interesting that a player that talented, back-to-back -back player of the year, and it just shows you he's got work to do. He does, you know, and he's and, and it's just he's and you know, and plus it's so mental because we all just look at his putting and go, how could he miss that? But you know, he also makes a lot. He's made a lot more putts this week. I don't know if you noticed, but and this is a vote. This isn't even a qualification. This is a vote with the players. So when you don't get Player of the Year, there's somebody that doesn't like you, and that, obviously they all like you. Okay, that's fair enough. Player of the Year this year, Jared. Who are you going to go with? Last year, just to remind everybody to to remind. Uh, <laughs> Our viewers, uh, Jan and Jared went with John Rahm, and I went with Morikawa. So, Jared, uh, what are you going to do this year? Because John Rahm ain't going to be in it, that's for sure. Unless he wins well, a couple of majors. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm, go I'm going Morikawa this year. Um, oh. I think, you know, last year was underwhelming as far as wins. You know, he, he, well, he didn't win until – he won in uh, – where was it? Summer in Asia, right? Late, late in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I, I think that start should start – you know, kickstarting him for this season. But really, if you look at his numbers from last year, they were right in line with where they were the previous few seasons. He just didn't happen to win last year. So I, I think he bounces back this year. I think he wins multiple times. I think he's still a player who's getting better. You know, he's still only 26 or 27 years old. So I'm going to go with Morikawa. All right. Wow, well, that, that's a good one. I mean, Morikawa, I think he's going to have a good year. I agree. Um, he broke through at the end, and he, and he, you know, he always had the tendency when he's leading to kind of, stumble and he didn't when he played in japan which was good um he actually got stronger and i think that probably helps his confidence you know i think it's going to be somebody we don't expect i think it's going to be someone you know i, I don't want to put too much pressure on ludwig but you know someone that's uh, yeah don't really do that. got an impressive game okay well do you have a few names like uh what are you are you talking like what so you're talking about somebody who hasn't been there before yeah, yeah. I mean, I like Max. I think Max Home has got a great That's golf game. That's a good game. one. Um, uh, I, I like his game. Everyone keeps saying that Shoffley's going to break through and, and win mm -hmm. a major. I'm I'm not as gung-ho as him as I am on Max Homer. I think he's okay. got a great attitude. He's very popular. And um, he really comes through when the pressure's on. All right. Well, we'll, we'll put Homer down for you then. And I'll uh, I'm, I'll I'll go with my uh, my my pick, my, my top pick and Rory. Uh, Rory just sort of like Scotty, you know, he didn't get a major win, so I know he's going to be hungry for that. He's still on top of his game, so I can see a, I can see a rebound big year for Rory uh, in 2024. Okay, next up, let's go with uh, which PGA Tour regular do you believe is going to have a breakthrough season? Now, this is going to be somebody who's never won a major, never won a FedEx Cup, or ever finished in the top ten in the world. Um, and uh, la and it also does not necessarily uh, have to be somebody that is going to be in the top 10 or going to win a major. Just somebody who's going to break through. And, and wow, I didn't realize this top 40 player uh, could hover around the top 10 uh, or, or maybe even he does uh, win a major. So, um, Jan, I already know who your pick is because you told me on our uh, phone call. So uh, go ahead and let everybody know who your breakthrough player is. Who did I say it was going to be? <laughs> Harris English. Oh, um, well, yes, I do think that. I mean, the word is on the street that, you know, he still hasn't reached his potential. Everybody keeps saying he's such a good player. He's, you know, he's a steady player, but he never breaks through. And he's, I think he's like 34. So he's at, he's about at the end of his, what they consider the, you know, your peak. And, um, I think it's time for him to make a move. So I, I'm looking for him to, to do it this year. He's, he's got enough confidence now. He's started to play better. I think he's going to be someone that breaks through when no one's expecting it. All right. Yeah, because last year somebody would have been smart if they would have said Brian Harmon or Wyndham Clark. So those are the types of uh, players we're talking about. So, uh, so English could definitely – maybe he's that guy uh, who can uh, find his way into that type of uh, season – so, and by the way, those, of course, those two players won majors, but, uh, Jared, who's your breakthrough player? Yeah, I'm going Sahith Tagala here. Um, you know, 26 years old. So I think he's still ascending. Um, you know, he, he needs to clean up the driving, just looking at his stats, like off the tee is pretty easily the weakest part of his game, but he's a good iron player. He's an awesome short game. He's a good putter. And he, 
he hits it plenty long enough. He just he just gets wild from time to time. So he needs to figure that out a bit. But you know, he's shown he's shown upside, right? I mean, he competed last week. He competed at waste management. Uh, was that last year or two years ago? He competed. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he's he, he's he's been he's been up there at the top of the leaderboard. I think he's ready to get a big win. Um, I think he's a guy who who could win a couple times this year. Uh, mine, uh, my my two players are going to come down to uh, Minwoo Lee uh, and Ricky. And uh, of course, Ricky. That means he's going to win a major. That's what it's going to mean for Ricky. I think he's ready now. And you know, we 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 know we went through the personal and the changes, and it looked like uh, that w- that was over. It looked like he got back to uh, where he uh, should have been last year. So now I think he's ready to take uh, another step. Uh, so um, so I'll I'll say Ricky. But uh, yeah, Minwoo was someone that uh, very impressed with. Of course, Jan, you know how well he played over in Australia, and it looks like he's ready also to take because he's been a little bit inconsistent in his limited PGA Tour starts last year. But uh, it looks like that maybe uh, he's uh, ready to because nobody really knows who the guy is uh, in, in America on the PGA mm-hmm. Tour. So maybe he's that perfect uh, breakthrough type of guy. That's a good one. I mean, I, I don't know how much he's going to play on the DP Tour as well, but he's he's he hits his swing speed is up there in the top five. I mean, and he's a little guy, but he's you know he's played junior golf. I mean, I I've known him since he was like nine years old, and he was he's been a superstar. Um, and same as Sahit, I think that's one thing that's a good player is that he's he's been there, he's been around the world, he's he was top junior, he's he's had a lot of competition, which really helps. I mean, the players that have had a lot of competition when the pressure's on in, in the majors is huge. All right, comeback player. Last year, I went with Jason Day, Jan went with Francesco Molinari, and Jared went with Webb Simpson. So we kind of struck out there. Uh, well, you did well. <laughs> yeah, they did okay. That's right. He did get a win. So, uh, yeah, that that worked out. Now, I, maybe a little bit more, but uh, he could have been a little bit more consistent. But it does look like maybe this could be the year that he's full, fully back to being maybe a top ten player again. So, comeback player, uh, Jan. Who are you going to go with? Well, I, I, I'm really, really positive on Ben on. He's just. You know, when when the coach is telling you that he's ready to go, you know that's a that's a good sign. Um, and Sean has said he's he's he worked so hard and to make those many changes, and you know now he's got the putting with the long putter, and um, he's got you know I think he's settled down. He's, he's in Orlando. He's I, I, everyone keeps saying he shot some really really low rounds this winter, so that's pretty impressive. All right, Jared. Who is your comeback player of the year? And I know you're not going to say Will Zalatoris. I'd like to. Um, I'd, I'd love to see it. I mean, I think I think the easy answer is Justin Thomas. I just think he's too good to have another year like he did last year. I think I think he'll bounce back. Um, the the guy I wanted to ask Jan about is Gary Woodland, who I know had a pretty serious yeah. surgery. I'd, I'd like yeah. I'd like to see him bounce back. Any thoughts on him, Jan? Yeah, well, he's such a popular player with the players. And, uh, he's, you know, he's a nice guy. I'm surprised he's playing the Sony that quickly. So that's good news that, it, that it, you know, obviously it wasn't um, malignant and they got it out and, and he's ready to go. So he's he had terrible headaches last year. And um, so now they're saying that uh, they're, they're going to give it, um, they're going to, hopefully he does well. And, and I'd love to see it because he's, he's a good guy and I'm excited to see how he plays. I, I think it's, He's just happy not to have any headaches. So um, he's got a great golf game. You know, he really hasn't done much since he was open with at at Pebble, but he's got a great golf game and he bombs it. So, so you're going to go with JT, meaning he's going to win a major? Yeah, I'll go with. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, I think yeah, sure. It's a pretty obvious pick. But but he's got to win a major. That's not so easy to go and win a major. So you can't, you can't like predict he's going to break through a player like that unless he wins a major. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I, he'll either win a major or he'll be, you know, back inside the top 10 by the end of the year. All right. He's working really hard. Yeah. I'm going to go with one of Jan's favorites. I'm going to go with Adam Scott. So uh, I think it's uh, – I think also, you know, Justin Rose is someone too that uh, – one of those uh, – oh, yeah, we have a flash flood warning here. No, I was wondering what that was. So, uh, yeah, uh, but Scott is I, – I, it, the, both of those guys have another big one left, but I think Scott, you know, you tell me, Jen, because uh, I know Adam's been, uh, he's, he's, he's always been a, somebody that has never, I don't know, it just always seems like somebody that's, he's so 
he doesn't put the pressure on himself to be a great player as much as I think he could be. I don't think that was ever, it just never seemed like there was something that was his goal. Uh, but at this stage of his career, it just seems to me that, you know what, time's kind of running out. I need to take advantage of my game as best I can. Totally agree. I mean, he's 46, but he's very fit. I mean, he works out like absolutely crazy. Um, and, you know, everybody loves his golf swing. His golf swing is amazing. He's very physically strong. So it's not a it's not a case of being too old. He's the, definitely the, the man is, you know, he's classy. The only thing is he's very private. You know, he, he doesn't like to even uh, bring his kids or his wife's out to the golf course. You know, I mean, he, the, he's always trying to keep them away from everything. You know, whenever we go to any of the pro-am dinners, like at the Open, he doesn't bring his wife. The only time you ever see them is is um, when they play the Presence Cup, when they all they all the wives come. But he's he's kept his family away from the limelight, so he gets when you know you, you have trouble even finding him at, at during the week and even at restaurants. You know he stays with his family. His parents come um, to a lot of events, and uh, but I think if he can just fix his putting, you know he's great from ten feet and yeah. long putts, but. But the short putting is, is, you know, how do you win a major when you miss so many short putts? You know, you just can't do that in a major. All right. Now I'm going to go through some groups and this is going to be players to win a first major. So, um, you know, I'm not going to make it easy. So uh, the, the, the three man groups, we got four groups. Okay. You got to choose one player from each group. Uh, first group, Burns, Young, Zalatoris. Jared, I'm going Zalatoris. I know there's a chance he's never the same guy again, but like when he's healthy, we've seen him. What he has six top tens in majors already. Like he, you know, he's he's been there. If he can figure it out health wise, um, I, I I just think he has a better chance than Sam Burns, who has yet to compete in a major. I know Cam Young has, um, but I don't know his. I think. I don't know if he's he's slumping or what. Cam, Cam Young just hasn't seen seemed like the same guy. Over he's the going last through six, changes, six, right, Jan? I know maybe one of these re insider reports you'll have some information on that. But I remember hearing that he was going through what was it equipment or something? Equipment changes, I think, right? The equipment change, yeah, because he swing. He's he sticks with his dad. He works with his game on his dad with his dad, and and um, you know, and he's a PGA pro, so he he works really hard on his game. I think he's I think he's going to be a breakout player. Um, I don't know that. He's going to break out at a major. He gets really nervous with now because of his, you know, again, the, when you're short game, when you're putting is your weakest part of your game, it makes it hard to win a major. I'm going to go Sam Burns. Wow. Burns. Okay. Why do you trust Sam Burns is going to break out finally? He did win match play, which was important. That was nice yeah. to see. But well, he's, he's got a wonderful short game. So, again, you need that with a with um, a major. My only concern is that he gets that right to left going. And once it starts going, you know, he tries to hang on to it. It makes it go more left. So that concerns me. But if he's working on his long game, um, his coach is always saying they're always working on it, but he's got plenty of power and I love his short game. All right. Group number two, Tommy Fleetwood, Ricky Fowler, Terrell Hatton, Jared. I went Fleetwood here. Um, really? More by process, by process of elimination. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Ricky's going to get it done. Hatton has no top tens in a major since 2019. He just hasn't really been in the mix. In he always gets majors. off to yep. a slow start. That's the problem. Yeah. And I mean, Fleetwood, Fleetwood has four top tens in the last two years. I don't really trust him to close the deal in a major. But I think if, if one of these three guys is going to do it, I, I bet on Tommy. Yeah, maybe what Tommy needs is he needs to uh, he needs to go in uh, to the clubhouse early on the final day with the lead and have the players behind him that's, choke. That's how it's going to happen. That's how it's going to happen. Yeah, that's what he needs, and he, and he needs to do that anywhere. He just needs to get that first PJ <laughs> win because that's totally even been a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to get that monkey off your back. Yeah, Jan. You know, I'm I'm probably gonna go with Jared's too. I, I I and you know, and I was I was down on Fleetwood last year. I didn't think his golf swing was good enough, but the you should see how hard he's worked. Uh, it's it's been unbelievable. And his swing, you know, I, I kind of call it the American influence because he was never anyone that worked out. 
you know, it was a typical kind of like a, a Lowry, you know, just go to the pub after you finish and, you know, and that was it. But he has really knuckled down. Um, his workout program is really impressive and his practice is, is getting there. So, and he's, he's obviously got a great short game. You know, I didn't like the fact that he went from open to close so quickly and under pressure with that much speed. Um, he was going to be able to lose control of it coming down the stretch, which he's, which he's done. Uh, but now his swing has really improved and his workout, you know, like I said, his workout is so good that he's getting stronger okay. so he can hold off that position. So I think, and it's time for him to break through. I think once he does, it'll be, it'll be fine. And it, and he's still making so much money. He's got really good relationship with his caddy. And I think that, you know, he, his caddy didn't get down on him. Sometimes, you know, your caddy gets to be, can be a problem if you haven't won or you choke under pressure. And <laughs> he's been yeah. so supportive that I look for him to be able to break through. All right. Even though I love Terrell Hatton's golf swing. Sure. But I, you know what? The reason that Terrell doesn't win the majors is that yeah. he doesn't have the patience. You yeah, have to yeah. be so patient in a major. It takes six hours to play your first two rounds. There's too many players playing. You're so nervous. They got the golf course so hard, and one little thing can set you off. And you know what Terrell's like. You know he's got such a temper. It's pretty funny to watch. But and he 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 thrives on negativity. But it's I don't think it works in a major. Well, that's why he always gets off to slow starts at the majors, and uh, he seems to always kind of get back into it. But it's just he's so far behind. So, all right. Uh, next uh, group we have Cantlay, Homa, and Shoffley. Jared. Yeah, and this this is a tough group because I think all three guys could do it. I went I went with Homa though because I you know among these three guys he's the one I trust most to close it out on a Sunday if he's you know in, in the final group or two. I think he he well, he finally got his first uh, top ten in a major last year at the Open, so I think you know that could kind of propel him sure. to winning one of them this year. Jan. Well, as much as I love Max and and uh, I think Cantley's going to do it. I think oh. Cantley. You know, he got married in the fall. They stayed there and got a be- had a beautiful wedding after the Presence Cup in in Italy, and it was gorgeous. And I think that's going to settle him down now. And I think I think it's time for him to win a major. And then the last group is Finau, <clears throat> Sung J M, and Tom Kim. Jared, I'm going Sung J here. Um, I I like Sung J this year. I think he's going to have a big year. Um, I don't think Tom Kim's ready quite yet. I think you know maybe. I think he'll win one eventually, maybe a few years down the road. Finau, I, I worry if his window's kind of closed. You know, he did have a bunch of top tens in the majors, but he he actually has no top tens in the majors over the last two years now. Um, so I, I just wonder if he kind of missed his chance to win. I, I think Sungjae's kind of in, in the right um, point of his career to maybe maybe pick one of these off. Jan? I'm going with Tony. Uh, you know, I, I love his golf swing. And he's he has he's really done as little as he could possibly with that with that uh, you know his, his ability and his talent. He's got a great golf swing. His putting has improved tremendously, and you have to have both. And he's one of those players that is kind of calm, which you need in a major. You need to not have that up and down emotion. So I actually think it's time for him to break out. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, not a good year for him last year, so this is a big year for him to kind of get back. Uh, and um, looked like he was on the cusp, but because uh, he did win that what he won that first FedEx Cup playoff event in 2022, I believe it was. And then last year, it just didn't go well for him. All right. Yeah, he uh, won in Mexico, but that was a pretty easy one for him. Now, um, winning the FedEx Cup is different from being Player of the Year, so. As we saw last year, so uh, who who are you gonna go, who are you gonna go with, uh, Jared? As far as who you think is gonna win FedEx Cup this year? I'm gonna go Morikawa if he's gonna be. Uh, oh, he's gonna player, win player of, the year. of the year and gonna, win the FedEx Cup. I mean, yeah, if he wins the FedEx Cup, he should be Player of the Year. Probably that probably means he won a few other times. So yeah, I think I think it's gonna be a big year for Morikawa. Okay, Jan. Well, I'm probably gonna go with Victor again. Um, wow, because back to back. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, the players hate the format. They absolutely hate it because of the last few events, you know, you get so many points. But and now that he understands how it works, you know, it's like a lot of players go, okay, I get it. You know, they're, I think he's, and you know, and I like his, his golf swing since they, he changed it. You know, he changed it beginning of last year and, um, and, and he's really good and he's, 
improved his six foot putting and his short putting has just gone. You know, everybody talks about how bad a chipper in bunkers he was, and he's, yeah. he spent quite a bit of time on that. So his game is he's pretty much got it all going right now. He does. He could have a scary year because he still hasn't won a major yet. So, all right. Uh, uh, rookies, which rookies? And again, some of these aren't, old, you know, young kids, but, you know, some of them are coming over from Europe. Uh, we talked about his, um, one of them, which was the European Tour Rookie of the Year last year, the DP Tour World Rookie of the Year. Um, again, I don't even know how to pronounce his name either, Jared. Rio Hisatuni, something like that. Um, Sounds right. Yeah. yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, but then you also have some some uh, guys like Ryan Fox, uh, again, Min Woo Lee, Robert McIntyre, Adrian Moronk, um, you know, even Sammy Valamaki, uh, some players that have had success on the European tour, uh, Nikolai Hojgaard, uh, Aberg is obviously top of the list. But then some players that they don't really know a lot of. You got this, this kid, Cootie, the former number one amateur. Mm -hmm. You got this Adrian Dumont kid. And you also have uh, Alejandro Tosti. You mentioned him, Jan. Um, and maybe we should also mention uh, the kid uh, Norman, the, the Swedish kid who had, uh, wins on the PJ Tour and the European Tour, I believe, uh, within the past year. So um, who's at the top of your list, Jan, as a couple of uh, rookies, younger rookies that maybe people don't know of, like Cootie and this Dumont kid? Well, the, there's 10 of them that are 24, 24 years old. But so they're, they're so young, they've got amazing careers ahead of them, and it's hard to pick which one. I'm going to go with the guy that won't even start the tour until June. Um, I just really think that um, Gordon Sargent is mm -hmm. going to be unbelievable. You know, he's already qualified for the PGA Tour. He, he went the same way as Ludwig. I mean, he got his 20 points. You know, they have that new um, developmental where if you the, it's a college, an instant – PGA Tour if you win it. And you have to have more than 20 points. And he got 20, more than 20 points. You know, you get a point for playing Walker Cup. And he was a uh, low amateur um, at the majors. And so, and he has, um, he's only six foot and quite slight, but his swing speed is in the top five. And, and uh, I looked at his swing again this morning. I'm studying it. Again, he has that, because they're young and their hips move, he's got that X factor of of over 63, which means that, you know, he's, but his swing looked good I mean, his positions at the top were really good. So he's got that. And plus he's got the competition, you know, that, and I think if you, and, and he gets his card now all the way from the end of the year and then the next year. So you don't even have to do the corn fairy. You don't have to go worry about qualifying. So he's got that pressure off of him. So I'm interested. I think he's going to come out firing. So you, so you're saying this is, uh, do you think he's, I mean, who's got a better future, Aberg or Sargent? Oh, they're both up there. I mean, I like Aberg better okay. um, right now because of his, his golf swing. He's got it all, and he's had another year under him. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, but I, I, I really am impressed with Ludwig. All right. Well, there you go. The next Aberg is coming, and that's Sargent, so we're going to keep an eye on him. Um, I just want to tease uh, Jan's uh, insider report. And again, she's going to have these every few weeks. Uh, we already mentioned a little bit of Benny on and Scotty Scheffler. Um, but, and, and, and those were Scheffler, Justin Thomas, Spieth and on with it were the players that you wanted to kind of tease about uh, this week, Jan. So um, with Justin Thomas and Spieth, it's more about what? The fact that you think those guys are going to actually, because some of this could be negative, but you think for Justin and Jordan, it could be positive. I do. I know that Jordan is now, you know, they've got, he's got two kids. They're gorgeous. He's got his girl and his boy. And, um, and he was the hardest worker last week. Um, they said that he was there early and he, and he was there until the sun went down. And Jordan normally is not that hard a worker. I mean, when he comes goes home, he works on his game. Um, but that they said the hours that he spent on his short game and his wedging and his golf swing was he was by far the hardest worker last week at the Sony. All right. I mean, at the, at the Century. And of course, on is also and 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 the biggest reason why you think on could have a big year. That when the coaches and the players say that he's there, it's kind of like what happened with Wyndham Clark. They kept saying he's shooting ridiculously low numbers when we go play practice, go play at, at home. And they were saying that about Wyndham, that he, he's going to break through because he was like, you know, they play for money when they're home and they all play. And, <laughs> yeah. and um, they said he was taking all the money and he had so much confidence. 
they kept saying that the only thing is he's not taking the confidence to the tour. He comes out and then he struggles. And so once he broke through at the open, it was, you know, it was pretty much, oh, actually the week before, when a few weeks before that, then I, they knew he was going to play well at the open. And so they're saying that about Benny. He shot a couple of 61s over in Orlando and his coach is really big on his game. He, he plays, uh, he practices with his coach and um, gaining that extra 20 yards, I think is huge. Okay. And then also, by the way, and, and Justin, who had uh, all sorts of uh, issues, personal distractions last year, you, you think that's behind him now? I do. I think they have settled into their new home. Um, you know, they're going to, they want to have a baby now. They've got a baby room almost, almost ready. And so I think that that's their goal, but I don't think that's going to hurt his game. <laughs> All right. Good. Glad to hear it. Cause he's already starting to play a little bit better. You could see it. Yeah. Um, and he's, you know, he worked hard last year and, but again, you, you lose your confidence, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and he, his swing is very powerful, but it, he, he does tend to hit some, some crooked shots you know he hits that big right to right to right sometimes and i'm hoping that he's got that work he works with his dad on his game so i know that he works hard so we'll see i'm pretty sure he's going to break through all right we're going to wrap up with our fantasy talk and uh i'll i'll post our fantasy team on next week's show so you can take a look because we're going to draft our, our live tour uh players uh, on this show as well um and let you know where we drafted our players so uh, we have our team. We're going to have 15 uh, PJ Tour regulars on our teams, and um, and then of co- and then uh, five Live Tour players. So it all starts this week. Uh, and uh, basically, as far as I, some of the things I noticed, uh, I had the most major winners. I had seven major winners out of the 15 players. Uh, Jan had four. Jared, you only had two major winners. Um, Actually, five of my top six pick, picks happen to be major winners. Uh, it doesn't guarantee anything, but I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm picking. I'm picking the guys that are going to win majors. They're going to win majors this year. Majors this year yes, <laughs> they've already won majors. Yeah. Uh, Jan <laughs> took the first rookie in Aberg, and uh, actually, Jan did that. Uh, let's see, what round did Jan do that in? She did that in the third round. Her third pick after Scotty Scheffler and Morikawa was Aberg. So that's how big she's uh, she, the year because she thinks Aberg going to have. And um, Jared, you did not uh, choose a single rookie on your team. So that's, that's probably old, good. Old guys. Old guys on my team. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jan had the most international players with eight. What a 15. surprise. Yeah, that's right. Big surprise. <laughs> little, little Miss International over there. Um, and only one round out of the 15 that we drafted – we, where we all had major winners and that happened to be the ninth round in our draft where I went with Keegan Bradley, Jan went with Adam Scott and Jared went with Brian Harmon. So those were uh, some interesting notes. And again, I'm going to post this all up. We'll, we'll take a look at a little bit more time on next week's uh, show to talk about it. Jared and I will break it down, including the live tour. Uh, but since we're over the limit on our time, we're going to go ahead and go right to it with the live tour draft. So let's go ahead and uh, get that going. And- well, you guys did so much better than me last year in that. I did pretty good in the one and done. I'm, at least I made money. So that's good. I got my. There you go. Money. See? But that's I the important one. Yeah. You got yeah, to exactly. do exactly. It has money involved. Yeah. We don't make, we don't, we don't play for money here yet. So, uh, all yeah. right. Live tour and, uh, Jan, you're going to go first again. Same order. Yay. So, <laughs> yes. That's, that's what happens when you finish last, you get all the luxury of the draft. So you're going to make oh, sure that you good. don't, you got to make sure you don't pick first next year. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's okay. I, I know I'd rather, I'd rather pick last. Um, all right. You got to go with John Rum. I mean, I love his golf swing. Uh, you know, I know that he plays going, he had a lot of money and, you kind of want to prove yourself. So you want to prove that, you know, they, that they deserve it. So he's, he's just by far the best, best player out there. Okay. John Rom. So he's off the board. That was easy. Next up, Jared, who are you going to go with? I'll take Brooks Kupka, um, largely for, you know, the, his chance to win majors. I think he could do it again. Yeah. That's uh that's also a pretty good one. All right. I am, by the way, this is important in our, in our, in our league. Cause you know, you, you can win the live tour with our point system. You know, that could put you over the top each week. 
All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Cam Smith. I know he could play better, too. So, I don't know. I, I think maybe the money got to him last year, maybe, something. Anything else you think got to, got to him, guys? Well, he didn't play well in Australia. I think no the expectations. I mean, he, you know, he. I watched. I walked around with him on Sunday at the Open because I just wanted to see what his game was. You know, what was missing in his game, and he, he kind of. It, it's almost like he took. He wanted. Everybody expected so much of him when they went back home, and they paid him appearance fees, uh, which, you know, I mean, everybody else complains when they that they. they how come you have to pay the Australians appearance fee, but you pay the international players to come back and, uh, and he didn't have to play, but of course he did. He missed the cut at, um, at, at Queensland when he was defending. So that didn't go over very well. And then he played badly the first round, which is, you know, everybody kind of was like, wow. I mean, the Australian and the lakes are two great golf courses and he didn't hit it that great. And, um, and I watched him on Sunday and he, didn't impress me from tee to green. He he, he played well and he, he played, I mean, he scored well, but he did not hit it that great. Now, whether he's trying, I know he was trying to get more distance and I think that's hurting his game. I don't think he needs to do that, especially in the live tour. Yeah, that's... Do you think, do you think the motivation is still there with him, Jan? Oh, you know, people if keep you're... saying that. I don't think the motivation yeah. is a problem at all. I mean, okay. I, it does take a little bit of the edge away. You know, when, mm -hmm. when you're doing it because you really want the money, it does change a lot of people. I mean, it definitely changed me when you're playing for that. But he wants to win so badly because he did get $180 million. So I think he's there's enough motivation. It's just I think it's too much pressure. He wants to do it so badly to show everybody in Australia because he was, you know, a huge. I mean, all the kids were all the change to cut their hair to, to mullets. I mean, he's still now when you go down there. All the kids that are playing golf have got mullets, and uh, it's pretty funny to see. But I think, I think the pressure was actually too much. All right, next up, Jared. Who are you going to go with after Kepka? I guess I got to go Dustin Johnson. Okay, I'll, I'll pair him up with his buddy Brooks. DJ and Brooks. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take. Patrick Reed. Huh. Jan? Oh, I'm going Bryson. You know, nice. I, I, I love I mean he shot 58 last year. That's amazing. And 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 he uh, he loves being a superstar. He loves all the attention. He's working on his game. I'm I, I, he's gone back a little bit to his older swing, which I like. I didn't like the new one. And um, I think that's gonna be good for him. Yeah, that, that's a, another superstar that uh has disappeared for a few years. So, and he's I think he to wants to prove himself with a major. That's really the only way you can nowadays on the live tour. All right. I'm going to go with uh, Gooch, who was a big time live tour. Did he win the live tour last year? Yeah, he did. Okay. So I'll go with Gooch. Look at that. No respect. Seventh player chosen, <laughs> live tour player of the year last year. All right. Uh, Jan. I'm going with Joaquin. Joaquin was so impressive. Uh, I walked around with him on Saturday, and uh, I, I actually had a couple of friends that didn't really know that much about golf that I was walking with. And on the first tee, he ripped this unbelievable drive, and they went, "Wow!" And and I had been saying I didn't really like his golf swing and all of this, and they and he's he he hit it so good. Um, and coming down the stretch in the playoff, I mean, he I asked him on the last hole. He had 178 yards and he was old and this was in the playoff and and the first time he hit it to the right and had to go over the bleachers and he hit it on the green and he missed the putt but he, but he made he made an eagle to um and it was an unbelievable shot so uh, he ripped his drive like so far and and he's like a little guy and then his second shot was he hit it to five feet in the in the playoffs in a part yep. five. And I asked him um, what he hit, and he said, I hit I hit a, a pitching wedge. And I'm like, there's no way you could hit 178 pitching wedges. He said, well, I hit an eight iron from the same place um, in the, the playoff hole before, and I knew I was so pumped, I was so nervous and so pumped that I hit it that far and 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 he loved it he handled the pressure so well so i'm going with him 
And he's a sweet kid, too. All right. Jared? Yeah, I wanted Neiman. So that's <laughs> disappointing. Um, I'll, I'll, take, uh, I'll take Abraham answer. Hey, I had him last year. I don't think he did too well for me, but I think no. he's going to bounce back this year. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, J so Jan stole Neiman from you because Jared stole someone from you. Who was it that he stole from you in the draft, Jan? Do you remember? Well, you Jan stole you stole um, Hoisgard. Hoigard, yeah. Oh, he's a Hoigard. Excuse me. Uh, it's American. It's, it's, uh, that's how we. Well, the same as as Aberg. They, we didn't realize Aberg. that he pronounces it Aberg. 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 The little a, the little s thing on the top of the a is that it's a, it's an a, uh, an a bird. Uh, let's see, who was it? I'm trying to see, and I can't. Uh, might have been somebody late then. Yeah, I can't. Uh, can't remember who it was. All right, next up is Jan again. Oh, I'm, I, I guess I got to go with Louis. He, he played so well in the Africa, South Africa, on the on those tournaments in. He's back home, and he and he's back isn't as bad isn't bad anymore. So I'm gonna go with him. Yeah, you know what? Actually, after he did that, uh, I, I I put a couple of bucks on him on each of the three majors because he was long shots and all of those. Three. He's not in the U.S. Open field right now, so I agree. I think Louis might have something in him. Um, so we'll keep an eye on him as an interesting uh, major player because we know he can play in the majors. All right. Uh, Jared? I'll take Harold Varner. Ah, oh, good one. Harold Varner the third. I'm going to go with Mito. Nice. Jared, your last live tour player. Oh, I'm up again. Um, give me. Yeah, Mito. Mito is a good pick. I like that one. I'll take, uh, I'll take Jason Kokrak. Okay. Jason Kokrak. That's what we're down to in the fifth round. That's of what we are draft. down to. Yes. <laughs> there's actually one. No, there's a couple more major winners left. Actually, yep. there's three, four, five, four more left. Five more left, actually. All right. Uh, Jan. Wait, is it Jan? No, it's me. Okay. Uh, let's see. My last pick. I'm going to go with, who should I go with? Here we go. Oh, you know, uh, yeah, you know, well, I don't know. All right, I'll go with, um, you know, I'll go with uh, Burmester. Hmm. You went with him uh, late last year, Jan, and I know he played well. Uh, mm -hmm. He just won an event uh, about a month ago. He actually he played pretty well. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think he went back to back, but he played well, like, consecutive events so yeah he's someone that's coming on jan your last pick your last this is the last live tours last draft pick of the year i'm stuck between uh the south african that oh what's his name that won the won the masters once um uh, schwartzel i'm stuck between him and um and Erebin. uh Who? uh -huh. well what was that it, Lahiri. Oh, Lahiri. Mm. Okay. By the way, you got uh, Casey's left, Grace, Howell the third, Leishman, Phil. Mickelson. Phil's, out there still. Phil's still out there. Kevin Na, <laughs> one of your favorites, Jan. Well, I know, but I'm really, I'm actually got a call in to, to I want to find out what, what's, I know he changed coaches um, when I was with him a year ago, and I did not like what they were working on with his swing. You so. got to get one of these players to uh, say you want to interview them for your okay. new YouTube channel. I'm going to go with an urban Lahini, Lahiri. Lahiri. Okay. Yeah. There you go. On a bond. Even though I love, I love uh, Charles to swing. I, I think I'm going to go with him. So again, players going to have a breakout year. And of course we could pick up these players, drop them, pick them up. Um, we can't, once we drop a specific player though, we can't pick that player back up. Uh, oh. But uh, Schwartz is still out there. Stenson, Tringali, Bubba Watson, Lee Westwood, Matthew Wolf, Ian Poulter, Thomas Peters, and the others that I mentioned. So there's still a lot of good players out there. And uh, we'll post our uh, fantasy teams uh, next week on our show when we handicap Amex, right? Yep. Amex is next. And that uh, when's the next signature event? Or the first one, it's, even though is it that they uh, consider that? LA? Uh, is it LA or yeah, Jan is, 
Yeah, how about how about Pebble? Is Pebble elevated this year? Yes, it is. It is. I think that's it is. Yes. yes. Pebble is wow. Yes. Wow. The which uh, which could be amazing. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see who plays. Yeah, they don't like that one. No. They hate I hate I hate watching Pebble. Now I think I might actually enjoy it. I mean, you love the scenery, don't get me wrong, but I just it's just a bad right. field. They always show the amateurs. Well, and the players so. don't like that they're gonna have three practice rounds. They hate that. Mm. So could right. be interesting. But is that the first one, Jared? Pebble? Yeah, so it's uh it's Amex, then Farmers, and then Pebble is uh, elevated, then it's Phoenix Open, then it's Genesis, which is also elevated. You know, I, that's going to be interesting. Um, elevated, Phoenix, elevated. elevated yeah. I yep. wonder who's skipping Phoenix. Because mm. Phoenix was getting all the all the top players the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah but there's a lot of players that don't like the, that, the, the famous hole. Sure. So they're probably going to use that as an excuse not to play. Yeah. Take on the elevated events. Again, Jan's going to be back with me to record her first full insider video on Monday. So that'll be posted on the channel. And then Jared and I are going to be back every Tuesday to preview every event on the PGA Tour this season. Jan will be back for the majors and some other big events. And of course, she'll have her own individual videos like the insider reports. Uh, we're going to start breaking uh, Jan's going to start breaking down some of the swings out there on tour. I know Scotty Scheffler, she just mentioned she's already broken down video on him. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that this year on this channel. So please subscribe, like, and share. Uh, Jan, Jared, uh, looking forward to another big year. Thanks for doing this. All right. Thanks. It's great to see you guys again. All right. Yeah. Happy, you... happy to be back. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, it's almost full-time golf season. We've got another, what, month to go? <laughs> Super Bowl? Yeah. yeah. The Bucks are going to get, probably going to get killed with the Eagles, except the Eagles have lost five games. So that's I was going to say, I don't know. That, that game could go either way. The it Eagles could. have a bunch of injuries. And so. that's on a Monday night. So yep. yeah, that's another story. But anyway, guys, appreciate it. Jan, appreciate it, of course. Uh, and uh, we'll see everybody soon. And uh, we'll see every, all the viewers out there back here. Uh, and, of course, the main thing is subscribe so you never miss a show. And we'll see everybody again uh, real soon.